Hello, students. Uh, this is Mr. McGravy. Welcome to Civics in Action. This is episode six, and we are leaving North Andover for this episode, uh, just right across the way, down the river to the to Lawrence. And I, I I'm really really excited to have uh, Mayor Dan Rivera, um, who is going to be our guest today. Uh, I'm uh, Mayor Rivera is our first uh, mayor that we've had on. I know we have had town manager Melissa Murphy Rodriguez, who I know uh, Mayor Rivera knows, and um, it, it's going to be great. And Mayor Rivera, before I allow you to say hello, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I was thinking when filming the show, this is, I don't know if you could see this, but. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I, I was. Um, I was born in Lawrence um, and grew up, you know, for a couple of years on Ferry Street. My my grandfather was a fireman and he was also kind of an accountant. So he would go to City Hall a lot. So mm -hmm. as a kid, I can remember going to City Hall and seeing the eagle on top and everything. So it, it, it is, I just thought I'd have that little artifact um, with the clock. So welcome, I just, welcome to the show, Mayor Rivera, if you'd like Thank to say for having hello. Me. I do really appreciate you having me. I, I appreciate you being here. Um, so we have lots of fun things to talk about. I, I'm really, really excited. Uh, so the first thing I like to do is I like to always like to do a little bit of an icebreaker, um, Mayor Rivera, and um, I try to kind of keep it real for my students. And, and, and it's, I know sometimes it's very hard for students to think that other people went through eighth grade, you know, their parents, me, and of course you as well. So I always preface this with, uh, this could be either a great time in your life or a deep, dark place in your life. Uh, I'd like you to go back to eighth grade, if you don't mind, and tell the students, where did you go to school as an eighth grader? What kind of things were you into? Sports, clubs, movies, video games, et cetera. And, you know, maybe, you know, best or worst part of your eighth grade, if you could just go back down memory lane, I think that would be nice for the students. Well, I'll tell you, we, uh, I went to the, when I was in eighth grade, I went to uh, a school called the Kane School. Uh, it no longer is there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it wow. has been replaced by a big school called the South Lawrence East School. Um, and we had an outside, uh, it was outside indoor kind of experience. They took the plans from another school in California. And so you had to walk outside to go to the other classes. And then there were some houses were connected by a bathroom. And one group of houses was called the Blue House and one group of houses was called the White House. So eighth grade was weird in that sense, but we was, yeah. you know, like everything else, um, I uh, played sports. Um, I did a, my very first play. I did a play called the the, uh, the Skills of Pericles. I think the wow. first. Wow. Yeah, it was great. I mean, I learned a lot of things, uh, mostly you know Greek mythology and things like that. Um, and I have very fond memories. Uh, I danced uh, my very first slow dance at a school dance. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, a Stairway to Heaven. Uh, I picked oh, the right yeah. song. You did much better. Than, you you were doing much better than me, Mayor Rivera, because that didn't happen to me in eighth grade. So that's great. That's great that you have all these fond memories. That's really really great. nice. So yeah, I mean it was great. So the Kane School is no longer there, but we it was great. Um, but also tough, you know. The the um, during that time, uh, I was living in the projects down the street in the at the um, the public housing project off of Mass Ave, actually really close yep. to the end of it. And you know we weren't very wealthy family and stuff, so it was it wasn't easy times in general. But uh, my mom worked hard and made the best for us. Well, that's great. That's excellent. And you have a little bit of everything for students. You have a play. You have sports. So that kind of that's kind of representing a lot of my students. Uh, so now that we have the icebreaker, I'd like to just kind of get in. Um, uh, I know that we have a mutual friend, State Representative Christina Minacucci, who helped put this all together. So thank you, Christina. Uh, and I also Love know that you know, she does yeah. a great job. We're lucky oh, to have her. She really does. And a lot of the guests that have been on the show are colleagues and civic allies of you. Uh, Trom Wynn uh, has been on the mm -hmm. show, which is great. And then uh, your counterpart, North Andover, uh, town manager, Melissa Murphy Rodriguez. So obviously it's, it, it's a big community. Um, since we're kind of going a little further back, I, I'm asking a lot of a lot of my students right now. We're we're doing a civics pilot um, from Harvard. This is our second year, and so st we're really trying to get the students civically engaged. And right now, you know, obviously with the pandemic and school, you know, they're really what's civic engagement. So what I like to ask my guests. Clearly, you've chosen a career in civics and government. Um, so when did you when did you like first remember being civically engaged? Share a little bit of a testimonial about what happened. And before I say that, 
I also want to say that I have the privilege of knowing one of your former teachers, Mr. Andy Roosh. Um, oh, come on. You know, Mr. Roosh is awesome. He is like, he's next, next level. He taught me a lot of stuff. Well, he is so, uh, he's so proud. Of, he is so proud of you, uh, Mayor Rivera. And um, he actually, um, after retiring, he started substituting at the North Andover Middle School. So he substituted maybe until about maybe two years ago. And uh, he's just a great guy. And I know that he, you know, taught you history and everything kind of comes full circle. But I wanted to give Mr. Roosh a shout out. I'm definitely going to send him a copy oh, of this he's episode. Awesome. He's awesome. You know, um, he taught us so much. You know, and um, he, he and his family are such a big part of Lawrence High School, uh, part of Lawrence High School sports. Uh, and, you know, his kids and the kids from that family have been, uh, you know, a big deal in our community. Yeah. I, I like to call people like that a Lawrence royalty is what I like to call Absolutely. It. And actually his niece in law is the librarian at our school as well at the middle school. So really? more Rouches, Mrs. Roosh, the librarian. Shout out to her as well. Um, so tell us a little bit about, you know, getting involved, being civically engaged. It might not have been in eighth grade. It might have come later. But how, how did you get involved? How did, you know, how did you get the bug for this? I tell you, the first time I ran for public for office was to be the secretary treasurer of my house, my high school class. Wow. Um, and like, I really am a guy who really likes to work behind the scenes. So I didn't run for, I didn't run for class president, but I got my friend to run for class president. And uh, a couple of my friends ran for treasurer and stuff. And so I said, hey, I'll run for secretary, for secretary uh, treasurer. And another one was president and vice president. Uh, and um, it was just really fun. You know, we got elected. My friend ran for, my closest friend didn't run for those offices. He ran for uh, a seat on the student council. Uh, so that was the very first time I ran for something. And then, and, you know. It was did, did, did you win? Did you win? Yeah, it was senior year. We won. Yeah, we won. And this was at uh, Lawrence, I Lawrence been junior, junior and senior year. Was this at Lawrence High? Is this Lawrence High School, yeah. When I went to Lawrence and, High School. And you went to the older Lawrence High, not the new one near the old movie theater. Correct. We were across the street uh, from what do you call it? From uh, the current um, library. If you're Lawrence High Library across the street, the old, the old high school. Great. Um, and, yeah. And, so and, we, and I was going to say, and actually, um, I did my student teaching there in high school with Mr. Oh. Roosh. So everything, it just all comes full That's not circle. True. Is it really true? It, did you yeah, know? I, I got certified in middle school and high school. And um, I, and actually, I knew his brother, who was the, the football coach as well. So uh, there's a whole, whole Lawrence connection here, <laughs> which is great. Wow. That's amazing. So, I think, yeah. um, so did that, did that. And then, you know, I went, um, I went to the Army uh, in after when I was in the army, I was standing uh, in Germany. I was stationed in Germany uh, right before the first Gulf War. There's a storm, there's a shield. And this guy in a suit came on to TV and he said, oh, we're going to go to war with Iraq. And uh, I thought, that's weird. I thought the guys in uniforms sent the guys to war, not the guy. You know, we had generals and, yeah. and, and commanding generals and stuff. And we're not in our society. Uh, the civilians run the military. So right. there was actually the Secretary of Defense. Uh, back then, he was na his name was Dick Cheney. Yep. Uh, he later became the vice president. So, you know, I said, those guys in suits, they make a lot of decisions. I want to be one of those guys. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's wow. So, because, uh, you know, like, you, you have, have so much need in my community. I've been through so much. I thought those are the guys that I, I want to be one of those people, be civically engaged in a way so I can, I can help out. Not to mention, I'm a kid who went to, I went to public schools. Yep. Uh, I was I was living in public housing. Um, I, I went to a public higher education. I went to UMass Amherst. Um, I got my house, my first house on the GI Bill. You know, we had food stamps, and I mean, every public every public policy they had, I was uh, a beneficiary of that, and I wanted to defend that. So I thought, if I can get engaged, I can make sure that the next kid that comes behind me can have those things. That's a great story, and, and Mayor Rivera, just you know, you're talking about civics, and and would you mind, you know, and maybe my students are, you know, maybe they're just hasn't been exposed to it or they might be ignorant. Can you just elaborate to the students if you don't mind? What do you mean by public housing? What, what, what does that mean? Oh yeah, so you know, there's um, housing that we have in this country that is um, subsidized. So instead of paying 100% of the rent, the government pays a certain percentage and you pay a certain percentage of your income to the rent. Um, and, and so there's a bunch of housing that's like that. Um, some of the housing is um, you pay a landlord and some of it is organized like a bunch of houses together that are public houses. So if you come down uh, Mass Ave, 
yep. uh, into Lawrence onto Loring Street, you'll see a, a wedged white building on the on the right hand side. It's really you can't really tell. It's all stucco. You can't really tell any different from any other housing mm -hmm. development. Sure. Except the people that live in there uh, are are living in public housing. The same thing next to the next to the um, the stadium. There's yep. a bunch of really pretty I know yellow, exactly. yellow houses and white mm -hmm. houses. They're really pretty. Um, those are also a public housing developments, right. and it's just subsidized. It originally started as a program for veterans that came home and couldn't find housing for them and their families, um, and then it just expanded from there. Oh, great! Um, so. You know, obviously, you know, I was talking to my students um, about you coming on and um, the way they know you is obviously through the gas crisis, which obviously was a tragedy. I mean, you were all over the news. And I definitely want to talk about that because that was a very important point for my students. But what I want, first want to ask you is, um, when did you first run for mayor and are you in your second term and are and, and are there term limits in Lawrence and what does that mean? Would you mind just touching upon the job of mayor yeah. and your experience? So about seven years ago, this November, I, I was in an election that I won um, by like a hair, I like very little. I, ran by, I won by 81 votes. Oh Do you have goodness. 81 kids? I mean, you you got to have like 81 kids on a football team. Like yep. there's more kids probably watching this. Yeah, I mean, I have 122 students, so. Yeah, so you have more students than I had votes that I won by. <laughs> uh, and that was seven years ago. Okay. And, um, uh, you know, so I I was, in my second term, I then, after four years, you run for re-election. Yep. And I won my re-election. I won that one by 300 votes. It's a lot. Yeah. It was actually a lot uh, compared to the first one. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I can't run for re-election a third time because there's um, term limits. And what that means is, one person can't run for the same office more than a certain amount of terms. Gotcha. So Lawrence has a four-year term, and a mayor can only run twice consecutively for two four-year terms. So it's you can only run twice for uh, mayor and Lawrence if you win back to back. If not, you gotta wait a period, and you can come back if you want, but you have to take a break after four years, gotcha. after eight years. So obviously, I think my students could equate that to like the president, like obviously President Obama could only serve eight years. He could not go beyond that. Um, so that's a great analogy. So what I want to talk about now is, is something I know that's you know very personal to you. You know, it was only two years ago, but, um, you know, being a civic leader, you really, really, really had to be involved with, you know, from Governor Baker at the state level to all your local uh, people. And then, of course, federally as well. So. You know, what have been some of the most challenging parts of your job, um, you know, at that time, you know, some civic lessons learned during the Columbia gas crisis, just as a person, you know, as a civic actor, you know, what did you learn? Tell us a little bit um, about that experience, just, uh, you know, in, in your knowledge base in terms of, of what you learned, um, you know, as an individual and then, of course, as an elected official. Well, I kind of knew this going into the, the explosions that, you know, the most important government is the local government. Um, I, we have the most impact in everybody's lives uh, every day. Um, you know, if you have a child that, you know, may get sent to war, um, if you're an elderly person, you have social security, you rely on some stuff, that's the federal government can move big things and do big things, but only the local government can do little things. So if you had a pothole in front of your house, uh, if you don't, somebody didn't pick up the trash, or if they haven't uh, paid the, the the dump site, or made the dump site available for everybody, or pick up recycling, um, if, if if your uh, your school building isn't warm, the people that fix that are the local government. So, if you're looking to make an impact immediately in people's lives, however small it is, local government is there for you on that front. And so, we noticed that more than anything during the the Columbia mm -hmm. gas crisis, people who were secretaries in offices that had nothing to do with um, you know, emergency response, we're sitting down and and and, and uh, taking and helping people every day to get through this cra that crazy event. Um, so local government is very important in people's lives, and I encourage everybody to to participate in that and to try to um, to to find something to do in the in the local government. There's only one president, and there's only one Congress, and there's a bunch of stuff that they talk a lot about a lot of things. <laughs> uh, yeah. But every day, we uh we work really hard in local government to make lives better. Now. What the COVID cri what the um, Columbia gas crisis brought forward was the ability for all of us to work together, Lawrence, Andover, North Andover, 
um, you know, in ways that we had already, we knew each other from different things. We do stuff annually as local governments, um, but never did we have to do, you know, come together that way uh, in, a, in, um, in such a small, short period of time to deal with such a big disaster. Um, civic engagement was important to that. If people weren't asking the right questions, it wouldn't make making sure that we were doing what we're supposed to do. Uh, engaging with the governor was very important. You know, the governor's a Republican. Yes. I'm a Democrat. You think that we wouldn't really get along, but we have a great friendship. He's a great guy and he's a great governor. We're very happy to have him. Um, you know, and my job is very different. And actually the, the town manager jobs are as well. Uh, they're nonpartisan. So that means it doesn't matter if you're Democrat or Republican, you vote to, for that person, just like a uh, town manager, it doesn't matter if they're Republican or Democrat, they run the city, they run the town. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're the same way for the city, for, for mayors. So, you know, we worked really hard every day to try to get um, the uh, Columbia Gas to do what it was supposed to, uh, and to help people, you know, get back to the houses with heat and hot water. The last thing I'll say is that, you know, another great way we knew government was important um, is in the way that utilities run their business. And I think other things run their business. A lot of people say, oh, too much rules and regulations for businesses will hurt businesses. Well, the reality is the reason why there was an explosion, uh, an overpresentation of the lines that caused the explosions in the Columbia gas crisis was because it wasn't an engineer that looked at the documents and okayed it all. And also there was an engineer watching the whole where they were doing the work. And you say, damn, well, that, and that could happen to anybody. Well, government is supposed to lay out the safeguards for people to do work. Otherwise, they can just dig up any hole and lay any pipe and sure. we can have more of those things. So they actually didn't have to have an engineer sign off on the paperwork. They didn't actually have, it wasn't a rule. Wow. So they were kind of on honor system. And so that's what one of the reasons I think, you think about how important government is, those little things. Um, and it would have cost them you know, the, the maybe, you know, $80,000 to keep an, uh, an engineer on staff to do that. Well, they ended up losing their business because now they can't, yeah. you know, sell gasoline and get sell, um natural gas in Massachusetts. Wow. I'm really glad, you know, you, I'm glad you talked about Governor Baker, Republican, Democrat. Uh, I, I'm sure you're very busy. I don't know if you had an opportunity to watch the vice presidential debate, but my students and I watched it. Oh, yeah. And, and the last question was actually from an eighth grade kid from, um, from uh, Utah, and uh, her question was: Every time I see TV, the Democrats, Republicans are fighting, uh, and I think that's a that's a huge misconception that some students have in my civics class that Democrats and Republicans can't work together. Um, I even had um, before the pandemic, I had Christina Minacucci come in, our state rep, with a Republican representative, Jim Calcourse, and they did. Uh, he's a good guy. Uh, he's a great. Great guy, and they did a myth busting thing where you know all the kids thought it was going to be this dragged out fight, and then of course you know Christina, you know, and even Senator Desaglio working with Senator Bruce Haar, who's a Republican. So I'm really glad that you talked about that. I think that's an important part that students need to know. Well, listen, governing is hard. Making these decisions are really hard. People have different ideas. You have friends, right? Some friends like scary movies. Some friends like, you know, romantic, romantic comedies. Oh. Some friend likes only movies that got dogs in it. Like, right. you got, and, you, and you go through life trying to com compromise it. All right, well, this week we'll see the, the scary movie. Next week we'll see, you know, a dog movie. Maybe we'll see a dog movie that's scary. <laughs> you got to do these things. And that's the way we make laws. Listen, there's no, there's no doubt that there's a problem with COVID-19. Listen to the scientists. They come up with rules on how we're going to work with each other and how we're going to support people who have need. And you try stuff. And you have to build trust uh, with each other so that people can say, okay, we trust you to do this, and then maybe we'll do something else. But I think the, the people have been so focused on the power of elected office, the power of government, that they have forgotten the responsibility of elected government, the responsibility of, of, uh, of, uh, of governing. And that is, to me, the most important thing. Uh, getting elected and having the power to say yes or no is only one part of it. Hmm. Having to be responsible for making sure that the trash gets picked up, making sure everybody gets tested for COVID, uh, making sure uh, every classroom is heated and every teacher is paid. That's something we all have to do. And we have to come to an agreement to do it because this is a democracy and we're a free and open society. 
And so everybody's ideas count. You got to vote. And then, you you know, you try. But once the election's over, you got to go govern. You got to make the things happen. And that's what I really like about Governor Baker. He's not trying to win another election. He's just trying to run the state. Um, I, I think it's pretty good that I'm, I, you know, I'm not ready for re-election. It allows me just to run for run the office, not run for office. Oh, that's great. That's, that's great. Um, so one of the last topics I wanted to talk with you is, um, and I'm sure you're very familiar with it, but uh, a couple of years ago, there was a civics action bill that was passed. Actually, Haverhill State Representative Andy Vargas, who I'm sure you know, wrote it. Um, and, and just a great story. He's talked to my kids about it. Um, and, you know, one of the things is, and for the kids in North Andover, Lawrence, wherever, it's a year of civics in eighth grade. And then at the end, there is a civics action project where the kids have to pick a topic and really almost like a science fair, but like interactive with civics. So I'm asking a lot of my speakers in your time, can you think of an idea that was generated either from when you were younger or a teenager, or even the youth of Lawrence or wherever you see now? Um, where young kids had an idea in their community and then being civically engaged and making the right connections, they did something about it. Can you think about something that you recollect about that, that maybe is connected to that? You know, it's funny. What I can remember is, you know, things like the cookie of the Commonwealth and yeah, I remember uh, that, you know, the, the, uh, the bird of the Commonwealth. Yes. Uh, things like that. I think that they, they you know, um, the, that means the official cookie, the official bird. Yep. I think the official cookie of the Commonwealth is the Toll House. Oh, I thought it was the Toll House cookie. You might be it right. Be. I don't we'll, even we'll know. We'll have to look that up. We'll have to look that up. And and by the way, then it's the rule. It's like the the official one. Um, and so I, that's. But I think that there are more um, impactful things that I just can't think about right now. You know, um, it's uh, it's no uh, surprise, and there's no. Um, no one can deny that the reason why the Green New Deal and fighting climate change has gotten so much traction is 100 percent because young people are pushing it. Um, and so, you know, they can see that what, what the adults are living them, leaving them for tomorrow. And so they're out there pushing it. And I think that's an incredible, important thing. Um, as soon as you're 18 years old, you can vote. And I put up this meme when I was running for election and I put a crowd at a, at a concert of kid, young people at a crowd at a conference, at a, co um, uh, a music, con um, what do you call it? Uh, rock music concert. festival. Rock concert. concert yeah. yeah. Music festival. And it was just tons of people. And I put number of registered young people. And it was huge. In my city, it's something like 3,200 kids were eight, above 18 years old, between 18 and 20. Wow. And, uh, and then I put an empty classroom with like six people in it. The number of them that actually voted. It was like less than less than a hundred, and so the the power of young people is immense. It, it, and it does, you don't even have to listen to the old people; you just have to go register to vote and vote, or get your brothers and sisters to register to vote and vote. I know you guys are in the eighth grade, but the other thing too, eighth graders are incredibly sharp. I remember I had you know I had my wits about myself. They you can sure make are. phone calls. You can make phone calls for candidates. You can make phone calls to elected officials, telling them to vote a certain way. You know, let's say there's a, something on the t town council, um, what do you call it, select board agenda, you want them to vote a certain way, call your select board members. If you if you see something on the um, the town meeting warrant that you want to vote for or against, you can show up and do it. It's incredibly empowering uh, for people to see that young people have their voice. Again, I, I know that we've talked about the cookie and all that stuff, but I know that there's bigger things that have happened in Lawrence. I just can't and, and just, you know, for the record, thanks to good old Google, Section 42 of Massachusetts Legislature Code, the chocolate chip cookie shall be the official cookie of the Commonwealth. See, I, I, thought thought, I thought it would be Fig Newton, too, because it's local, because it's local. Yeah, the, like the Toll House cookie. Well, I, I think I think that's I mean, I think the cookie thing, I even think that's something I'll talk about with the kids. That's an interesting thing. Well, and, I, and I'm supposed and I, and I know it's a surprise to everybody. A guy that looks like me, big my size, <laughs> my waist size. We'll be talking about cookies. Uh, I think the biggest surprise is that I got it wrong. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, I think it's important that we take away all these interesting parts of the conversation. So, um, Mayor Rivera, I just want to thank you for coming on. This was such a great talk. And what I'm doing with these is obviously, you know, North Andover is going hybrid. So I have the kids sometimes in school. And then, of course, we have these remote days. So we're showing these to the students and then we're creating products and doing some really cool reflections. And speaking of my students, you know, I'm giving all of my speakers an opportunity um, 
to kind of, yeah, I'll say, kind of give a pep talk to my students. Um, being students in the age of the pandemic is not very, you know, it's not easy. It's definitely a challenge, whether it's kids in North Hanover or kids in Lawrence. But, it, you know, if you could, you know, have some, uh, you know, closing remarks to them about the school year and, and moving forward into 2021. So the first thing I tell people is, I know it's weird to do anything in Zoom. Don't cheat yourself. Do these Zooms, interactions with teachers and in and, and your schools, do it 100% because the only people who miss out, if you miss out, if you do it and you cheat and you don't do it full, is you. Now, if you want to get into that college, if you want to get into that, uh, you know, maybe go to a high school that's a private high school, you still have to perform. They're not going to give you any breaks. And so you have to use this time very, you know, effectively. Please do that for yourselves. You're only hurting yourselves. There aren't, my, my, uh, my, computer teacher said I, I he said that he learned to teach computers uh so that we all can learn how to do computers now back then it was dos right um no, no uh no internet nope. and uh he said learn computers because gas stations are going self-serve <sighs> the number of jobs that you can get without a high school diploma without graduating eighth grade is very little they're out there yeah even if you want to become a carpenter you have to have these basic english and in, in um in uh in math skills that you need to go through life and but if you don't take these time especially now with the covid uh no one's gonna ask no one's gonna say okay well you know what we're gonna do eighth grade over we'll go next year go we'll another eighth grade and that wouldn't be fair to you um and so we're gonna take you gotta take this stuff very seriously um and and just the in a larger sense not just around the covid um just take your life seriously you have a long life to live kids it, it, that grow up in america you live. You can live to be a hundred years old. So you know things that are happening to you in the next ten years. You're only going to be a fifth of your whole life is going to be lived. Yeah. You could be great, uh, and, and then later on take a break, and then have a whole another life and be even greater. Um, and you could take a break now and you know and go to college and get a nice job and build a family. You have a long life ahead of you. The expectation is that we love you so much, we want to hug you up and keep you protected. Uh, uh, but at some point you're going to be on your own. So take this time to learn uh, and do good things for your life. That's, I think that's the best that's I can great, for advice. It's a great way to end. And students, that also means showing yourself on Google Meets and responding to questions and not just being a fly on the wall. It's important. So, uh, well, Mayor Rivera, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your busy can I just schedule. Say this? Yes. Can I just say this? I don't know how, I, I don't know how Mr. McGravy does these things. And I don't know how he tests or he scores. But if you ask a lot of questions, guess who's who's gonna be in his mind when he's testing? You. <laughs> yeah, that's if true. he never heard, he'll be like, "Who's this kid?" <laughs> yeah. Stephen who? And his paper's only kind of weak. I, but if Stephen asks a question every day, make sure he say, "Hey, Stephen's trying. He's hustling." That's a good uh, trick. I, I'm not saying don't ask questions. Just ask questions. I don't want to make uh, Mr. <laughs> Baby's life any different, more difficult than it is. No, I love questions. I love questions. I always say when the kids ask me questions, I'm always saying, hey, I'm earning my paycheck today. You know what I mean? I'm earning my paycheck. It's as simple as that. Well, mm -hmm. as some as someone, you know, who was born in Lawrence and who has roots in Lawrence, this has been a huge honor for me to have someone in, in your seat as the mayor. And uh, my pleasure. I, I want to say thank you. And hopefully, um, Hopefully we can uh, do some other things in the future. And uh, I really appreciate it. So thank, thank you so much, Mayor Rivera. Thank you, Ms. McGravy. All right, and students, this is uh, episode six is in the can. We will be doing definitely a follow-up on this. And thank you very much for watching. And that's it.